thing, another thing I wanted to to move on in a completely different direction to ask Tommy about is about your um like social media presence and how you've been like pushing that because I've followed on TikTok and everything like that and I know like both in your previous bands and now you run all the social medias and like do a lot yeah. of promotion and stuff. So where has all that come from? Is it fine? It's just another outlet for creativity or have you consciously just tried to learn to get good at it? I'm, I'm still trying to learn to get good at it, but it's kind of really tough because um, what I've kind of noticed throughout the years is that it almost seems like nobody actually cares. It's as, as bad as it sounds. Mm. It's just that when you try to advertise something, it's like you say, oh, go follow my band on this or, you know, go follow my band and listen to this song. It just seems like nobody actually does, mm-hmm. which is kind of, it's terrible because it's just, you want to show to the world what kind of um, passion you have for your career. Yeah. And they just look down on you and just laugh. It's like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you kind of have to get the right demographic and kind of push it to the right people. Um, it's like record labels and everything. You need to kind of be informed about them, which we haven't been taught about as well within mm. our course, which we should really be taught about. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you kind of need to find them on your own. You need to message them, email them, and kind of just advertise yourself in the best way possible. Mm. Um, and it's still tough because I I don't understand it fully, um, but I'm still trying to. Mm. Um, like we did an Instagram post and kind of uh, promoted it. And this was just like Kevin, I think. So it was last November. Um, And it instantly got a thousand likes. And we were just like, okay, how did that happen? Yeah. No one followed. Yeah. Um, See, so we've, we figured that out. We used to promote every one of our episodes. Mm -hmm. We'd chuck a couple of, we'd chuck a tenner on it or whatever. And they'd bump it up to like two, 300 likes, or we'd put 30 quid on a big episode with an interview on and it'd get pushed to 16,000 people or something interactions wise. But the only way that you transfer, we found anyway, that you transfer likes and interest in that post to followers is through giveaways. Yeah. It's the only way that we found like that's the reason we try and do one every 10 episodes or whenever we get the opportunity to is because it is the only way that people then follow and nine times out of 10, they will stick about and leave that follow. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's hard. It's such a weird one. Cause like we're all, we're all, we all do it. Cause we all scroll past a promoted post. Cause we don't realize that they're a sponsored post to some yeah. extent. Like mine's always just fucking either, band stuff on our podcast page like well, I've, I've trained the algorithm to just give us new bands and it's great so it helps us out fucking loads that's how we found so many bands but on my personal it's like anything from music to like i've got a lot of sure microphones and stuff come up on mine and i'm like oh, i'm never gonna i'm not gonna buy a sure microphone they're like fucking 350 quid for something that's done the same as my as um a behringer that i've got and it's like it's so difficult to transfer that paid promotion into tangible viable fans exactly and it's almost like we it's almost not useless because more ears on your tracks is the best thing. Obviously, if someone likes it, they're going to have more more chance to kind of like get an opportunity to see who you are and whatnot. But I find that if it's just photos and that, there's almost like a almost a no point doing it to some extent nowadays. Yeah. It's weird. Do you yeah. do you find that when you're when you're creating your posts and stuff, do you have like specific checklists of what you how you make it what you're going for honestly no um we just uh, well we post a post on instagram and if i look at it and say i like it i'll put like 10 15 pounds on it and i found the easiest way is to put it for 15 days but put it at the lowest price yeah Um, we found that as well so it it gives you more like a um, kind of reach yeah and you have to like pick your demographic as well so you have to say oh uh, this certain age or people who like this people from here and it, it kind of it's stupid because you don't kind of give your interest to people who actually want to hear your music it's just mm. people who scroll past give it a yeah. like and that's it yeah have you um do you spend a lot of time on twitter 
Um, I'm trying to, but I don't personally. Because it's honestly the the one that I would recommend, especially band wise, that I found has just been like incredible is Twitter because it's very like um it's community led. Yeah, isn't it? It, there's a lot more conversation about it and people will get involved and listen and to be honest like a lot of the bands that we find that go to the playlist or track of the days and everything it's just someone who's replied to one of our tweets being like i've got a song and because it's there in front of me i'll be like cool i'll listen to it then because i can just tap it and that it does create a bit of a community and we've like our followers have grown quicker doing that because then you can then interact with them and then sort of try and plug our podcast or like you could do music as well but i think it's quite it's it's a bit nicer because you can actually speak to people Whereas on Instagram, I think unless they comment, which is a little bit like rarer, you don't really know who's looking at it or what you get in or anything. Whereas on ours, I feel like you can get a little bit, you get less like likes, Mm. but you get more meaningful interaction. Yeah, exactly. I found it, it was actually something Tommy sent me recently, which sort of jumped out at me. It was like, it's really strange that there seems to be some sort of weird disconnect between new bands releasing genuinely good music and being able to put it in front of the people that want to hear it because there are loads of people that want to hear your music you know there's loads of them like if if you just send emails to the right people there are literally people waiting every day for new stories new people to write write a blog about or Mm -hmm. like get another article out because that's good for them yeah Um, we're two of them yeah exactly but (laughs) for some for some reason there's i don't know i think it's this idea of it, it it's the music industry has been made to look a lot like a sort of overnight success industry yeah you know what i mean because that's all you hear about you hear about this like this one i don't know 17 year old kid who put a a, a a cover up on youtube and then you know he sort of gets a billion views blows up and gets a record deal and all the money he wants mm. um whereas the reality is like you're gonna put out multiple tracks and you can you can be pushing it as hard as you want but if you're not trying to find people that most want to hear it instead of just pushing it out into the same audience it's not going to grow yeah yeah i also think there's a massive negativity like negativity uh what's the fucking word i'm trying to look for don't know mate when you so when people argue and there's drama and there's beef then followers and interactions come with it. Oh, unfortunate. And it's unfortunate, yeah. but you've got to kind of play the game. We had a couple of, we've had a, a few little, not run-ins, but like a few Twitter beats. We've kind of spurred. We've kind of like lit the fire and let it run a little bit. Fuck the snuts. Yeah. Fuck the snuts. Yeah. <laughs> and they, yeah, we had it. So uh, quick, if, if you listen to this podcast the whole fucking time, you're going to understand this story, but the snuts, we, we, um, essentially called the snuts out for doing a paid online gig and we said you've got shit with like scots and um you've got there's stuff with scots they're doing there's stuff with strongbow they're doing and we were like look for sponsorships before you ask your fans for money was kind of our argument instead of like asking for seven eight pound for a gig where you're only going to do like a 45 minute set try and see whether you can earn that money back through sponsorships and they created a whole podcast about us to respond to our podcast and they called the podcast fuck your favorite podcast and it still only has one episode to this and it day. still only has one episode this day and it was just to respond to us but it's it's yeah it's, and it's, and it, 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 but it comes with it's a even though it's such a negative thing it gets that press out there like even when we had the the motive slag off james the James stands on Twitter were fucking back and forth in the mentions and bumped our interactions up 20,000 interactions. Exactly. Which is mental. I think mm. one of the most underrated social medias to use is actually TikTok. Mm. People mm. kind of look at it and be like, oh, it's just for 14 year olds. It's a new Vine. But um, I, I know one of my friends, uh, she literally had like only 100 kind of followers and all that. And one like kind of video went up and she did like this own, like her own thing. And now she's got 300,000 and it's just like bangs done it. Over. Yeah. It's yeah. mental. It's a mental platform. You are seeing these because of the algorithm, it's such a nicer algorithm to find new things in comparison to Instagram, Twitter. That's the whole point Facebook. of it, isn't it? Is they're trying yeah. to put things in front of you that yeah. you're going to like. So as you said, when like, as you mentioned, there's people looking for music and there's people making music. 
TikTok would be a great way of putting those two things together. Well, get those blondes. people, and then you can be like. Yeah, well, blondes they... are a prime example. Blondes, riffs, I think they're called. They're another one that are massive on TikTok. Bears and, and trees. You are what? Bears and trees. Yeah, there's like a few bands that somehow they've made videos perfectly able to clip down and run alongside their own music mm-hmm. and it works so nicely as its own little thing hey, i've enjoyed the wombats have appeared out of nowhere yeah, out of and no i love that, that remix they, they just and you could tell they had no fucking clue what was going on like, Not no idea. and then they like came on and then they started with a few tiktoks now they've put the tiktok remix of that song on spotify it's and sick. now that's banked because it is sick but like it is funny how it's like they would probably literally checked it. And that's what Blonde said, like when they, they blew up on TikTok, they didn't even have it. And then someone like messaged them and they were like, went on and like, there's like 250,000 videos using their song. And they're like, we need to get involved in this and try yeah. and take advantage. But as you say, then it's, it's still then all about, can you get those people to actually stream the song? Yeah. And you then get those people to come to a gig and follow you on social media. And That's, even then it's hard. So it's, yeah, it's they they were saying like it worked for music streams, but getting them to follow like their Instagram or something, which is like their main outlet for new shit they're bringing out. They had, they like it been used in millions. It's got millions and millions of views, hundreds of millions of views around the world. This like clip of their song, but they still only had like, 1700 followers on instagram but their song had over a million streams mm. which is fucking which, nuts a lot of people hear that and think well that, that's fine you've got a million streams then why aren't you just happy with that it's like str- streams are absolute peanuts you know what i mean yeah. like y- you cannot live off streaming unless you are consistently hitting top 40 mm. right? like and even then it's something like um record labels i think their cut is like 65 percent um of all streaming yeah which is absolutely which is ridiculous so like we need a record label joe <laughs> well, we, need, we need a song Elliot, to start with <laughs> but, but yeah it's like that, that's what the issue is i mean streams don't have a they don't have a long life to them you can get you can get a hundred thousand streams one day and then a month down the line get none yeah, exactly. So it, it's impossible to sort of build a career off that, which is why so if you need that following, which is mm. so hard to obtain. Yeah. So difficult. That's why we need gigs back so you can oh, see yes, the people please. and sell some exactly. tickets and get a vibe. Get some, and Get some charisma back in it. Do you know what I mean? Then it all then it all works, doesn't it? But there we are. 